Thank you, Dr. Raju. Um, so uh, from our first talk, we learned where the, what the anatomy of the ACL is. It's so confusing. If you go over the decades uh, along your training period to being a consultant and practicing, things keep changing. And I think we need to keep changing with the times. So many things to we to consider about, do we do a single, a double, a triple? Is it a bundle that we are recreating? Is it a ribbon we are recreating? Do we preserve the remnant? All this involves techniques and requires good skills as well. Now, no ACL talk is incomplete without uh, talking about Freddie Fu, who did a lot of extensive work on the ACL. And he has told us at the end of the day, if you put a, a, a reconstruction in the anatomical place and you wait and watch, physiology will take over, biology will take over, and you will end up with a good reconstruction. But of course, your technique has to be good. Now, femoral drilling uh, can be done inside out. You can do it all inside, or you can do it outside in. But the key thing is whatever technique you use, it has to be anatomical. It has to cover at least 50 to 80 percentage of the native footprint. And of course, it will remodel. Now, what are we trying to recon uh, recreate? It's the, uh, the tissue area just underneath the residence ridge, as previously mentioned. Do we recreate as a single bundle or a double bundle? It's a surgeon's choice. The most important aspect of it, of doing the surgery, is patient positioning. Preoperative is more important than the intraoperative. So you need to make sure that the limb is stable. You are able to get adequate flexion. Please be careful that there are patients who have good big musculature, thick adipose tissue. You might think you have put the bolsters in the right place, but if you can't flex properly, you will end up with complications. Now, portal placement is the key thing with any arthroscopic procedure. I use a high anterolateral portal so that you get bird's eye view and you're over the fat pad so that when you flex the knee, you don't get any tissue coming in the way. Now, putting the accessory anteromedial portal is uh, equally important for me because you need to visualize the, um, the footprint from an end-on view and also bring your instru instruments across to get a kind of a circular to a slightly oval. You don't want to get a long oblong tunnel or, yeah, or you blow out at the back. Now, clearing the soft tissue is important because the fat pad, if you start dissecting, it will start to swell up. So you don't want to dissect too much of the fat pad. You just release it off the notch. You have to clear the soft tissue of the footprint. If you are an uh, early surgeon, you need to get your anatomical landmarks clear. So don't try to preserve as much as tissue as possible because you may put your tunnels in the wrong place and it's not good at all. You have to do a notch plasticity in case it's a very narrow notch. And it also helps with you visualizing from the anterolateral portal across into the footprint. Now, as you, uh, your uh, learning um, skill develops over a period of time, you would want to preserve the footprint so that you know what is the native anatomy for that individual. So you're not going to go by just radiological markers or where you feel it's going to fit in, but you're going to look at where the footprint is and aim for the center of that. So you can use devices like a chondral pick and um, mark it prior to using that to see where your bundle is going to be. Make a preliminary mark and then visualize where it's supposed to be. And once you're happy, you make a deeper crater in there so that who, whatever drill pin that you're going to use from the system is going to go through that. Of course, uh, we have learned about the ruler technique. It's slightly a bit challenging. Uh, if you're not used to using it, you have to curve around the lateral femoral condyle. You have to make sure that uh, you're right at the back so that you know where the center of the footprint is, and then you make the adequate mark and to drill it. Now, coming to the drilling itself, so you, you're, you're going to use the accessory anterolateral, anteromedial portal. You come across whatever the guide pin that you're using, you make sure you hitch right in the center of your pin. You need to have a good assistant who is going to give a control flexion, otherwise your drill pin is going to keep skiving away. And once they are in place, just have an overview as to you are clear of all the tissue, especially your medial femoral condyle if you're using an accessory anteromedial portal because you don't want to scuff cartilage off and you're not doing any uh, great favors to the patient. Once you're happy, drill through. Again, drill through in a controlled fashion. You don't want to just um, um, skive off anywhere. And once you have penetrated the lateral uh, femoral cortex, you measure to see what your depth is. And again, this varies if you are using a fixed loop or um, uh, an adjustable loop. And this is how it should look, the angle. And now introducing your reamer, you have to be extremely careful because you've got a knee that is flexed. 
So you got the anterior horn of the medial meniscus, which is there. So you don't want to force it through because you're not going to visualize it because once you extend, it's going to go underneath the fat pad and you will never know that you have caused an injury there. You need to be very careful. Do not start reaming until you have seen the tip of your reamer on the condyle. Slowly ream through. Sometimes if you've got very soft bone, you might just plunge through. So the initial bit, when you break into the, uh, the, the wall, it has to be done very gently. And once you have bro broken through, keep visualizing that. I, I usually use one of the shaver ends through the other portal to clear off the debris as we drill. Depending on the length of the graft you have got and the adjustable, uh, the, the fixed loop or the adjustable loop you're using, you cater your uh, tunnel accordingly, the depth of the socket. Once you have done that, when you ream back, you slowly ream back so you clear, uh, clear all the bony debris along with it. Use a shaver in and clear off the bony debris again. Look all around. You'll be surprised that the bone debris are there all around the knee, knee joint. I keep on looking at it even till the, I put the portal closure. So you have to clear all those. These can cause secondary in injuries to the chondral surfaces. And once you have cleared all that, make sure you visualize the tunnel from the anteromedial portal and make sure there's no bony debris in there. You've got a good posterior wall and there is no breakout at the lateral side. Now, if you've got a situation where you're unable to flex down completely, you've got options of flexible reamers. You've got a learning curve for that, but it's not difficult. You've got low profile reamers as well, which you can introduce horizontally before you make it vertical to start drilling. You can use offset guys. If you're not comfortable and you feel that you're going to skive off because of the, how the slope is inside the notch, please use the offset guys, but don't use that to judge where the entry point is. Your anat anatomical landmark has to be perfect. This is only a guide. You can use all inside techniques as well. Uh, in my hands, I use it predominantly for the pediatric population to avoid the physis. So you can use the, uh, the fluoroscan to see that you're exactly at the right place. Again, here you have to understand that a lot of bone debris is formed and you have to clear it. There's no socket for it to come out through the bone. So you have to clear the um, debris. So you can use whatever retro reamers that you are comfortable using. And again, slowly drill through. The advantage of a retro reamer is as you drill, you can go in and have a look at the same time as you're not violating anywhere else. Of course, the suspensory fixation is what we have to use when you use uh, all inside. Now, we've got other techniques like the outside in. You've got you to make an incision on the outside, but it's useful when you have lesser flexion angles and you have difficulty in positioning. Now, coming to the tibial drilling, and like um, uh, Dr. Bhushan mentioned, we've all moved away from the ACL footprint uh, fixation and it's now the tibial. You have to be accurate as to where you put the tibial tunnel because you may go wrong in a lot of ways if you're not accurate enough. So you have to understand the landmarks. That's where I was trying to uh, kind of uh, emphasize that as a beginner, you have to clear the soft tissue to know all the landmarks. And here you can see the medial bony, uh, the medial spine. You, have, you know where the PCL is, you know where the anterior horn and the root of the lateral meniscus is, where the footprint is, and where the intermeniscal ligament is. Once you know all of this, then it becomes easier for us to do the uh, tibial side socket drilling. So the first part of it is putting a guide wire. So introducing a jig, you should be comfortable with whatever aimers that you use. I'm used to using the elbow aimers, for, but for beginners, you can use the tip aimers or the oval aimers, which give you a, a, almost an accurate positioning of where your guide pine is going to come through. The next step would be to, you have to measure the total length of the tunnel that you're going to make, because that's what's going to determine how much of graft is there going to be in the socket and what sort of fixation you've got available to control that. Again, you have to slowly drill it. Do not force it. The, one of the things with these aimers is a fair amount of distance between the tip and the bone. And if you are not careful enough, it'll skive off somewhere else. Now you have to get the sagittal angles and frontal angles within a fair uh, level of accuracy so that you don't cause any chondral damage on the medial uh, tibial compartment. And as you watch, you can slowly see the tibial pin coming through the footprint. Now, drilling the socket is equally important as well. So 
you have to, it has to be done in a very controlled fashion. Sometimes you have very hard cortexes on the outside of the tibia, and if you're not careful, you can cause, cause splintering there. So you have to use sharp reamers, gentle drilling, and once you're broken through, you slowly pass it through, and when you reach the subchondral bone, you begin to see the, the guide pin beginning to uh, spin around, and that's the time you need to be careful because you don't want to push through and cause damage to the femoral side. Now we can do remnant preservation where you can uh, make the um, tunnels through the stump. This has a learning curve to it. And then you can use oval aimers with all inside to again use the same technique like on the femoral side. Again, you need to be careful that the reamer should not catch on the root of the lateral meniscus. Now the take home message is, it's very important to identify the anatomy and then you have to fill the footprint to about 50 to 80% using the biggest graph that you can get. And if you get an inclination angle of less than 15, you've done a successful ACL reconstruction and the rest for biology to take over. 